Oops. The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 8 News Now or Next Star Media Group. There is no doubt in my mind that two weeks from now, you're going to see a surge in cases in, as a result of these two rallies. Tonight on Politics Now, Governor Sisolak fires back at President Trump after last week's big rally in Henderson. Plus, this was a peaceful protest. This was not a rally. Republicans say they're not being treated fairly by Nevada's coronavirus restrictions. Joe Biden and I are committed to reform that includes a national standard for use of force. And a one-on-one -on -one interview with vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris on wildfires, police reform, and gun control. From 8 News Now, this is Politics Now. Thank you very much for joining us here on Politics Now. I'm John Langler, and we start with good news for bars and tavern owners all across Southern Nevada. After months of being closed by the coronavirus pandemic, they can reopen late Sunday night. Bars that serve food have been partially open. Bar tops, though, they've been shut down since July. Thursday, Clark County once again asked Nevada's COVID-19 task force to let them open up, and this time the task force agreed. All bars have to follow strict guidelines, though, including social distancing and operating at half capacity. The owner of Scoundrels Pub up in North Las Vegas says employees are happy to hear the news. Employees are very excited. Uh, everybody's excited to get back to work. Customers are excited. I've been getting text messages and Facebook messages. Uh, people want this. It, it's, it's a good thing. And we're really happy. Clark County also asked the task force to allow conventions and churches to operate at half capacity and for youth sports to start again. The task force says Governor Sisolak would have to make those decisions in a new emergency directive. This week started, though, with a large President Trump rally in Henderson. That was on Sunday. Soon afterwards, well, the organizers were fined by the city. The rally was over at Extreme Manufacturing in Henderson, which is owned by Don Ahern. Now, as you can note from this video, in addition to being well over the 50 person limit, there was no social distancing. Many of the 5,600 people didn't wear masks. During his speech, President Trump continued his attacks on Governor Sisolak. Because this is a great place. You have a governor right now who's a political hack. We want to put violent criminals behind bars and tell your governor to open up your state, by the way. Open up your state. Now we're going to hear more uh, from the president's speech a little later on. The city of Henderson fined Extreme Manufacturing $3,000 for six violations of Nevada's COVID-19 directives. Owner Don Ahern held a press conference the day afterwards. Now he compared the Trump rally to people who have been gathering at gaming tables, pool parties, and recent Black Lives Matter protests. My goal was to continue the great American traditions of the right to assemble and to free speech. About a month ago, Ahern was also fined $250 by the city of Las Vegas. That was for a Trump campaign rally at his Ahern Hotel, which is near the Strip in Sahara. There was also a beauty pageant held the day afterwards. Governor Sisolak quickly responded to all of this. He called the president's rally dangerous, selfish, and reckless. 
He sat down with the I team's Vanessa Murphy. Let's start with President Donald Trump. He called you a political hack, told his supporters to tell your governor to open up your state. Your response. Well, I think that, I don't know where he comes up with the political hack. I thought he was talking about his golf game or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I can respond to President Trump and what he said. His actions were selfish, reckless, irresponsible. He jeopardized the health and safety of every person that lives in the state of Nevada. And there's just no excuse for what he did. I mean, he knew what the rules were. Those rules were developed in coordination with the White House. I mean, the, the populated, the limited gathering space. If you were red zone, it had to be 10, yellow, you could go to 25. We made it 50. He knew what the rules were and chose willfully to just disregard them. And then his comment that he wasn't worried about, you know, getting the virus. Well, I'm not worried about him getting the virus. I'm worried about the 3 million people that live here getting the virus. And I just think it was very, very selfish of him to do what he did. What about the criticism that the protests that have happened, the protests that have been happening, don't get as much criticism? Okay, well, the protests get plenty of criticism. The difference is that you have a business. Let's take, for example, a gathering. Businesses we can regulate uh, because they're licensed. You need to go in like a casino could not have what they did at that manufacturing facility uh, because they have a gaming license and they know what the rules are. But you can't control. The casinos are having a real problem. If you're inside the casino, you're going to follow the guidelines. You walk out on the strip after you leave one casino walking to another one, or you walk on Fremont Street, there's really nobody in charge of you when you're out there. We don't have law enforcement handing out tickets. There's not a group of people that are giving violations or ambassadors are just saying, you know, you got to put your mask on, you got to socially distance. We don't have any of that. You know, we count on people being responsible. And unfortunately, in this case, they simply were not irresponsible. We were not responsible. They were irresponsible. The president is saying you were behind this effort to make sure his rallies and campaign events did not happen. You said you were not part of that. The next question is, no one from your office, no one from your administration made any phone calls? No one made any phone calls with these rallies. You know, I read about them in the paper and online, just like everybody else did. I don't know who the Trump campaign or whoever it might be called at the airport, both in Tahoe, both in Reno and in Las Vegas. And thank goodness those businesses were responsible enough to tell them no. It would be going against the governor's directive if we did host a rally like that. There is no doubt in my mind that two weeks from now, you're gonna see a surge in cases in, as a result of these two rallies, one that was held up in Minden and the one that was held in Henderson. The one in Henderson, it couldn't have been worse. It's a confined area. There's not a lot of circulation of air. A lot of people were not wearing masks. And I'm sure some of the people behind the camera put them on when they were taking shots. But you, you looked at the audience, all the views I saw, people were not basically mostly wearing masks. They weren't distanced. They were in large groups and they're, a lot of uh, particulates are coming out. They're hollering, they're chanting, they're cheering, that sort of thing, which helps spread the virus. That's what spreads it. Now you can watch Vanessa's full interview with Governor Sisolak over at 8newsnow.com. On the other hand, Nevada Republican Party Chairman Michael McDonald called the president's rally in Henderson a peaceful protest, similar to the Black Lives Matter protests. Here's what he told 8 News Now, Kristen Drummond. This was a peaceful protest. This was not a rally. Uh, we put it out earlier. I said, everybody come down and join me in my, in my protest. This is no different than BLM. So if the governor is going to allow in the city of Henderson, the city of Las Vegas, Clark County, they do no actions against BLM when they take on the strip, when they march up and down the strip, when they burn stuff, when Officer Shea got, when Shea got sh uh, shot. When you start to see that and there's nothing that's done to them, not one thing. The governor's never done anything to them. The city's never done anything to them. They just let them do it. But when we want to have our right to assemble, <clears throat> we hold a peaceful protest and nothing's done. That's a problem. People at the president's rally also held signs saying, quote, this is a peaceful protest. McDonald has started a GoFundMe page to help Ahern pay that $3,000 fine. 
While the November election is just 45 days away, all registered voters in Nevada should get a mail-in ballot. Critics of this process don't trust it. We had our Vanessa Murphy go to the man in charge of Clark County elections, Registrar Joe Gloria. She has more from election headquarters in North Las Vegas. There's a lot of misinformation about the upcoming election. We want to clear that up for our viewers. And I have Clark County Registrar Joe Gloria here to help clear this up. We are in front of the room where the ballots will be counted. And that's one question. How can voters be sure that their ballot was received and will be counted? All voters will have the opportunity to go on our website. Through Registered Voter Services, they can uh, log in and there's information there that tells them what the status of their ballot is. Or they can always call 702-455-VOTE and speak with one of our customer service representatives. There is a concern about voter fraud. If there are extra ballots by mailboxes, especially apartment complexes, or someone picks up a ballot that's not theirs, that they can fill it out, sign it. What can you say about voter fraud? Well, first off, that would be an illegal action. It would be against the law for anybody to vote a ballot that is not theirs. However, we have several checks in place. Number one being every ballot that comes in has to be signed. We verify that signature to make sure it matches what's in the database to verify their identity. And there are several steps that we have as far as security also leading into the tabulation of that ballot. President Donald Trump has suggested voting twice. What would you say to that? That would be an illegal action. Um, and it's unfortunate that those types of statements are made. I would discourage any voter from trying to do so. We will definitely know if you've casted two ballots and we will go after any voter who is illegally voting twice. Southern Nevada, Las Vegas, it's a transient location. And especially now with the pandemic and job losses, people might be in between homes. How can you be sure that they will receive a ballot? Voters need to make sure that they're checking to be sure that their information is correct. So now is the time to update your information if you've moved because mail ballots are not forwardable. Whatever address we send it to, if there's nobody there, it gets returned to us. Thank you so much. Less than 50 days from the election. If you have questions, let us know. We will try to get them answered for you. In North Las Vegas, Vanessa Murphy, 8 News Now. Early voting starts October 17th. There are 35 in-person early voting locations, but on Election Day, more than 100 in-person locations will be available across Clark County. You can also drop off your ballot at any of those locations instead of going inside. We have all the information you need at 8newsnow.com. There's also a link there where you can register to vote. Coming up next on Politics Now, one-on-one -on -one with Senator Kamala Harris. We ask the vice presidential nominee about police reform and an assault weapons ban. Coming up. Some of the uh, supporters had signs that said, this is a peaceful protest. Um, they're comparing the crowds at these rallies to the protests that we've seen recently. So what's your response to folks who question how you can support one gathering? But yeah. yeah. Okay, there was something else playing in my ear that was confusing me. Uh, it might be the voices in my head. Hard to say. I was going to say, wait. <laughs> Stand by. Kira. <laughs> Welcome back to Politics Now. He knew it was deadly, and yet still, even most recently here in Nevada, in Henderson, where I have been, he brought thousands of people together and didn't, didn't, wasn't concerned whether or not they were wearing masks or socially distanced. That is Democratic vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris, also in Las Vegas this week. She held a Zoom rally with the Culinary Union and a roundtable on the Latino community and coronavirus. Our Orco Mana caught up with Senator Harris for a one on one interview. And we start with Orco asking her about the Black Lives Matter protests and police reform in a potential Biden administration. 
Joe Biden and I are committed to reform that includes a national standard for use of force, um, banning chokeholds and carotid holes. George Floyd would be alive today. We're saying that there should be training for, for law enforcement, but there should also be consequence when they break the rules and break the law. And uh, currently at this point with those uh, different policies that you have uh, in mind, uh, is there uh, a framework or a pathway that you see kind of from introduction to implementation at this point? I think that it is going to be about, again, speaking to the, the voices of the people. You know, I have to tell you, in these marches that we've been seeing around the country for the last many months, um, people of every race and every age, every background, every gender, marching together arm in arm, um, saying we are better this and than this and we're going to fight for the best of who we are as a country and I, I find great optimism in that. And so, yes, it's going to be a process of going through the legislature and, and having a president of the United States who has the courage to take on the issue, even sometimes when it might be difficult to talk about or hear, um, but to take it on to make us a better nation and to, to allow us to be more true to the ideals um, that we hold so dear, including, again, equal justice under law. What, what's sort of the main mission of your climate agenda, and is the Green New Deal anywhere associated with it? Our agenda is about acknowledging the science, and it, 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 we can't afford to deny it any longer. We are going through a climate crisis, and you can see that in the wildfires that are getting worse and worse in California each year. You can look at the storms that have ravaged the Gulf Coast. Um, we're seeing extreme weather conditions, and, and it, it is attributable to, to, in large part, human behaviors that we can, we can adapt to this moment. And so that's about pushing for a clean energy economy. Joe Biden and I want to create jobs, and we understand that investing in infrastructure, including renewable energy and clean energy, that's going to be a huge job creator. I want to switch gears uh, now a little bit um, to gun control, an issue important to uh, many people in the uh, Las Vegas area, especially after the 1 October mass shooting. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I'm just curious to know if you um, and VP Biden would institute an assault weapons ban. There is definitely, when we are looking at um, the situation in terms of where we are as a, as a country, there is no question that we have got to take um, seriously the, the issue of, of gun safety. And you can talk to any mother or father, certainly before the pandemic, who would endure their kids going through drills in school as young as kindergartners um, to learn how to keep themselves safe if there was a gunman roaming the halls of their country. So I do believe we absolutely need a, a ban on assault weapons. We need to renew the assault weapons ban. Um, because those are weapons of war and they have no place on the streets of a civil society. You can watch Orko's full interview with Senator Harris on 8newsnow.com. An end to temporary protective status. Coming up next on Politics Now, the court decision on the Trump administration's efforts to end TPS. We'll tell you how many Nevadans it will affect. Plus. I'm Alexandra Limon in Washington. Coming up, I'll tell you when top U.S. health officials expect a COVID-19 vaccine to be widely available and what they say could be more helpful than a vaccine in fighting the pandemic. Politics Now.
This week, a federal appeals court ruled the government can end temporary protective status for more than 400,000 immigrants. About 4,000 of those TPS holders, as they're known, they live here in Nevada. More than 3,000, as you see there, are from El Salvador. Others are from Haiti, Nicaragua, and Sudan. The Trump administration says it wants to end TPS for people from those countries because it says gang members were coming over the border with them. Uh, the president also says that this is meant to be temporary, but now it's permanent. Miguel Bajarona is a TPS Nevada committee member, and he's lived here in the U.S. for 25 years. How would you feel if the government of that country, after 20 or 25 years, comes and make a decision and say, you guys don't belong here, you guys need to go back to, the, to your countries. That group plans to continue advocating for a path to permanent residency or citizenship for people with temporary protective status. Since the pandemic began, more than six and a half million Americans have caught the coronavirus. More than 195,000 people nationwide have died. Well, this week on Capitol Hill, senators grilled top health experts about how to stop the pandemic and when a vaccine will be ready. Alexandra Limon reports. Despite President Trump's public statements that a COVID-19 vaccine could be ready next month, CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield says he doesn't expect one to be widely available for another 9 to 12 months. Late second quarter, third quarter, 2021. Health officials say it's possible very limited doses of a COVID-19 vaccine could be ready by the end of this year, but they say those would be prioritized for healthcare workers and those most at risk. This face mask is more guaranteed to protect me against COVID than when I take a COVID vaccine. Democrats say President Trump is damaging Americans' trust in health officials. He not only said that masks cause problems too, he also shared a tweet saying masks represent a culture of silence, slavery, and social death. Admiral Brett Gerard, the Assistant Secretary of Health, defended the Trump administration's response to the pandemic, saying new cases are down 48 percent, hospitalizations down 49 percent, and deaths are down 33 percent since the peak this summer. These gains could be fleeting or even reversed if we do not continue to follow the national plan and exercise personal responsibility especially wearing masks and avoiding crowds. The Trump administration says once it's ready, it wants to deliver the vaccine to Americans for free. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Also on the Senate floor this week, Nevada Senator Jackie Rosen continued her crusade to get a new Bureau of Land Management director appointed. William Perry Penley is the current acting director of the BLM, but he's been in that acting role for more than a year without an actual nominee being confirmed. Some of the highlights of Mr. Penley's disturbing anti-public land actions and sentiments include this. Working on behalf of private interests to roll back critical public land protections during his tenure at a law firm. Advocating for the repeal of the Antiquities Act, a landmark law signed by President Teddy Roosevelt that protects our public lands and gives the president the power to designate national monuments and fighting to drill on sacred Native American lands while mocking these same Native Americans' religious beliefs. About two-thirds of Nevada is managed by the BLM. Nevada's other Democratic Senator, Catherine Cortez Masto, well, she says the Trump administration needs to nominate an actual nominee to oversee that agency. A new head man at UNR. We have the latest job for former Governor Brian Sandoval coming up on Politics Now. You and our president slash future Senator Brian Sandoval. Yeah, but he's only with someone like super moderate too. Cause yeah, I can't imagine like someone like Trump wouldn't have picked, you know, no, 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 I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're watching Politics Now.
Finally on Politics Now, former Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval has a new job. He's the president up at UNR. Thursday afternoon, the Board of Regents voted to give him the position at the University of Nevada, Reno, the first Hispanic president in the school's history. Sandoval is currently a distinguished fellow at UNLV's Boyd School of Law. He briefly also worked at MGM. He takes over at UNR October 5th. The decision was never really in doubt, actually. In fact, the press release that announced Sandoval as the new president was sent out before the regent's vote actually took place. As you may know, Brian Sandoval was the governor here in Nevada between 2011 and 2019. And that is all we have for you this week on Politics Now. Don't forget you can stay up to date on politics online and watch us every Saturday. Just check out 8newsnow.com. We'll see you next week.